A common behaviour among people with insomnia is going to bed earlier or spending more time in bed in an attempt to get more sleep. Unfortunately, this often ends up making sleep even more difficult because we can start going to bed before we are sleepy enough for sleep. And this leads to more time awake rather than more time asleep. With this in mind, it can often be helpful to go to bed later if you find yourself finding it hard to fall asleep or stay asleep through the night. In the short term, this can lead to significantly more sleepiness, especially as your new bedtime approaches. And it's when this heightened sleepiness hits that many of my clients ask me whether it's okay to go to bed a bit earlier if they're finding it hard to stay awake. There's no quick answer to this question, so I'm going to explore it in a bit more detail in today's video. Hi, I'm Martin Reed. If you have insomnia, I offer sleep coaching programs that will give you all the skills and support you need to enjoy better sleep for the rest of your life. You can learn more at insomniacoach.com. So as I just mentioned, it's really common for people with chronic insomnia to spend a lot of time in bed, often more than they ever did, even when they slept well and never gave sleep a second thought. Although this behavior is completely understandable, we want to get more sleep, so we give ourselves the opportunity to get more sleep by spending more time in bed. The result is usually more time awake during the night and in turn, more sleep-related worry. To help address this problem, one of the first behavioral changes often suggested to people with insomnia is to spend less time in bed to spend an amount of time in bed that more closely matches the amount of sleep they actually get. Since this amount of time in bed should always be a little longer than your average nightly sleep duration, say around half an hour or so, it doesn't deprive you of sleep. Instead, it deprives you of prolonged nighttime wakefulness, which is usually unpleasant and a big driver of sleep-related worry and daytime fatigue. When you start to allot a more appropriate amount of time for sleep, it's helpful to give yourself an earliest possible bedtime and a final out of bedtime based on the amount of time you've decided to allot for sleep. So if you've decided to allot six hours for sleep, you might have an earliest possible bedtime of 11 p.m. and a final out of bedtime of 5 a.m. or an earliest possible bedtime of midnight and a final out of bedtime of 6 a.m. Giving yourself an earliest possible bedtime and a final and consistent out of bedtime in the morning ensures that you'll be spending enough time awake during the day to build sleep pressure that will help you sleep at night. A consistent final out of bedtime also provides the body clock with a strong morning anchor it can use to better regulate sleep and wakefulness. In other words, if you consistently get out of bed and start your day at the same time, it will be better able to ensure it's sending wake signals through the body when you want to be awake and allowing sleep signals to take over when you want to be asleep. In the short term, all this extra time awake increases sleep pressure and often leads to a greater sensation of sleepiness as bedtime approaches. And that's exactly our intention in the short term, since it provides us with evidence that our sleep system is working as it should be, helps us recognize the difference between sleepiness and fatigue, makes the thought and process of getting into bed feel good, and helps make it easier to fall asleep. Since this technique can be so helpful, I usually encourage clients to do what they can to remain awake until the sleep window begins, at least for the first couple of weeks. Often it becomes more difficult to stay awake if we're sedentary, for example, sitting on the couch and watching TV as bedtime approaches. So one way to help ensure you stay awake to really build an intense sleep drive before going to bed would be to avoid activities that you know make it really hard to stay awake. Since it's usually quite difficult to fall asleep when we're moving about or standing, one way of preventing sleep from happening too early might be going for a short walk or doing some other things that require a little movement. For example, you might pick out tomorrow's clothes, make tomorrow's lunch or plan the week's meals. 
sometimes even some light stretching or doing things like drawing, crafting, or coloring can be helpful. Typically, as heightened sleep drive leads to less time awake during your chosen sleep window, you'll start to allot a little bit more time for sleep in short increments. However, if you're not filling your sleep window with sleep, but still find it really hard to remain awake for the start of your sleep window, you do have a couple of options. First of all, you might try advancing your chosen sleep window. This would involve keeping it the same in terms of duration, but starting and ending it earlier. For example, a sleep window of midnight to 6 a.m. might change to become a midnight of 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. This can be particularly helpful for people who may have a body clock that wants to naturally wake earlier in the morning and therefore sleep a bit earlier in the evening. Another option involves making the hour or half hour before the start of your sleep window the last time you check the clock. During this time, just do things you find relaxing and enjoyable. It's always a good idea to give yourself time to unwind before going to bed. And if you start to feel sleepy enough for sleep, remember that sleepy is not the same as tired. Allow yourself to go to bed. On a side note, it can also be helpful to have a clear plan in place for what to do if you find it hard to sleep when you're in bed during your sleep window. A plan I often recommend is to just get out of bed whenever being in bed doesn't feel good and doing something a bit more pleasant until conditions feel right for sleep. This can also help reduce unpleasant nighttime wakefulness and further reduce sleep related worry. So in conclusion, spending less time in bed, often by going to bed later than you are at the current time, can be a really helpful technique for improving sleep since it builds sleep drive and promotes sleepiness at night. In the short term, this can be hard since it can be challenging to remain awake for your new later bedtime. However, that's precisely the intention in the short term. So it's worth sticking to at least for a couple of weeks If you find that you start to fill your sleep window with sleep, you might then add 15 minutes or so to your sleep window for a week and see how you get on. If after a couple of weeks, you're still spending a lot of time awake during the night and still finding it really hard to stay awake for your chosen bedtime, you might consider advancing your sleep window so it starts and ends a bit earlier or giving yourself a bit of flexibility with the start of your sleep window while maintaining a consistent final out of bedtime in the morning and or adding the technique of getting out of bed during the night whenever being in bed doesn't feel good. So I hope you found this short video helpful. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I do try to share a new sleep snippet video every week. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or suggestions for a future video, please leave a comment below or you can email me directly. My email address is hello at insomniacoach.com. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'd like to leave you with this important reminder. You can sleep.